So hi everybody, I'm Dawn Kirkham and in this video we're going to dive into the history and lore of ley lines and earth energies. So I've been dousing energy for over two decades and I still just know a fraction of the true nature of earth energy. So earth energy is complex and this video is a brief overview. I'll share with you some of the history, the lore and techniques to identify some of these earth energies and how to use them for your own benefit. So this video isn't a dousing course or an earth energy course. It really is just a gentle introduction to the world of earth energy. So earth energy being present in the landscape isn't new. It's millennia old and wisdom cultures all over the world recognize that it's present. China calls them dragon lines. South American shamans call them spirit lines. Irish people call them fairy lines and Australian indigenous people call them dream lines. Now, according to the late Hamish Miller, who was one of the UK's leading earth energy dousers, earth energy is the earth's nervous system. He tells us that humans have a bio biomagnetic field that we call the aura, and that surrounds us, but the earth has a geomagnetic field which interacts with our auric field. So it's made up of lines, curves and grids and this system of earth energy is dynamic and it has a profound effect on our physical, our emotional, our mental and our spiritual well-being. Where the lines cross, they're powerful energy centres that show up in the natural landscape and some believe they're the places where our ancestors built their ritual sites. Now, have you ever been to a place that without any clear explanation or reason why, you just felt different and it made you feel maybe more at ease and connected? Maybe, maybe not. I bet you have. These places can be found all over the globe. Places like Stonehenge, Sedona, Glastonbury and Mount Shasta are among some of the most powerful locations on the planet. They're renowned for their special energy and how they make you feel when you're there. But you don't have to travel to faraway places to experience this. Chances are you can find spots in your own local landscape that make you feel good when, the, that, when you're there. Chances are you've already found them. These are places that you find peace. It allows you to breathe fully and deeply. And even in the urban landscape, you can find these places as well. Now, whether you believe that these energy lines are the super highway for alien visitors, as some do, or they do in fact move so subtle energy around the planet or not, the belief in a web of in invisible energy throughout the earth is a feature of many wisdom cultures across the world. Our understanding of this system of energy has been greatly enhanced by pioneer dowsers and as a consequence there is a growing body of knowledge and expertise in this area. But despite this, the opinion as to whether or not earth energy really does exist is divided. But is it too much of a stretch to believe that the earth has a similar collection of energy centres, meridians and acupoints just like the human body? Just because science can't identify them, does this mean that they don't exist? The system of earth energy is known as the geodetic system. And this was a term coined by um, Guy Underwood as he identified the many different aspects of earth energy that exists. His work today remains a must read for the serious earth energy dowser. Now I think that most people have heard of the term ley lines, but what are they? So ley lines can be seen as the energetic veins of the planet. They radiate subtle energy and they're said to be able to take information or energy from these kind of higher vibrational points and carry them around the world, spreading knowledge and wisdom to, to all, all inhabitants, all that cross the path. Now, where these lines intersect, they create powerful meeting points where our ancient ancestors built their structures with clear knowledge that they were leveraging this energy. The power places that I mentioned earlier are all said to have several converging and crossing um, energy lines. 
Now, typically in the dosing community, the terminology ley line isn't used to describe these earth energy lines. In the Sacred Space Handbook, author Sig Longrun from the American Dowsing Association, he talks about the terminology that is used and the differences in thinking about what these various terms mean. So he suggests that these differences produce inconsistencies with what dowsers find in the same sites. And I have to agree with him. So he offers some clear and consistent terminology that's used by dowsers universally. And it's really helpful to share some of that in this video so that we all know what we're talking about. So let's get clear about the term ley line. Most people use this term for these energetic bands that run through and within the earth. But this isn't really the, the correct use of the name. The term ley lines are universally considered to be the visual line that connects three or more ancient sites to another. So these lines are topographical and they're not thought to produce any energy at all. They can be found in the landscape visually or with an ordnance, ordnance survey map, a ruler and a pencil. Sig Longrun calls these T lines. Now, dosers tend to use the terminology energy lay to describe the earth energy lines. So this differentiates them from the topographic, topographical ley line that Watkins described. So the term energy lay or e lay is used for these natural earth energy lines. So I'll be using the term energy lay. So energy lays have common features that can be identified through dowsing. They're typically six to eight feet wide, although they can be wider. They're straight and they're yang in energy. So yang energy is associated with the masculine and yin with feminine. It is possible to locate these energy, um, energy lays, uh, measure them, find their frequency, their direction and their strength all by dowsing. And here's a short demonstration on how to locate an energy lay using dowsing rods. And I'll start by giving you a little lesson in the techniques that you'll need to douse an energy lay should you want to do this for yourself. So the technique of dowsing is thousands of years old and images of what looks like people dowsing have appeared in cave paintings all over the world. Now there are many theories as to how dowsing actually works and many that don't even believe it. So my understanding of dowsing is that um, in us, in all of us, we have access to the collective wisdom of the universe. And most of us spend our days at the level of our conscious mind. And we cut ourselves off from the ability to access this knowledge. So techniques like dowsing help us to tap into our superconscious, where all of the knowledge and the wisdom of the universe is. And so the tools that we use in dowsing, like a pendulum or an L rod like these, are just a tool to help us to tap in. So through minute muscle movements, I guided from our um, subconscious, the rod um, or the pendulum answer our questions. So I do have a video on pendulum dowsing, uh, but for now, here's a few techniques that I want to share with you um, with uh, rods, um, because this is gonna be really helpful for dowsing earth, and, um, earth energies. So first let's talk about L rods. So they're called L rods because obviously uh, the shape is a, a, an L shape. It was originally done with Y-shaped branches of willow and they were used for water divination. The practice has evolved into these rods, but some still use the traditional Y-shaped branches, particularly for locating water. So rods, when you get rods, they come in a pair, but I really only work with one. And they're made of various metals like copper and brass. I've even heard of um, some rods being made out of silver or gold, but that's beyond my uh, pay, pay grade. These are copper, these ones, and you'll notice that there's a sleeve on them and the, the, these sleeves are on aluminium, but they could be copper also. And the sleeve helps the rods to swing freely and not to be interfered with by your grip. However, there are some dowsers who prefer them without the sleeves at all and it is just a preference. 
Now you don't have to go out and buy expensive sets of rods when you're starting out. You can actually make them from coat hangers and have um, uh, straws for the sleeves. Um, however, you'll probably find these a little bit bit light for earth energy dousing uh, because the lighter the rods are the more that they can get blown by by the wind if you're in the field so you'll probably want to make a purchase um, of a heavier set at some point but while you're practicing coat hanger rods are great so let's look at holding your rod so i'll show i'll show you holding them both but as i say i only really work with one uh, with one rod now and you'll see that later in the video where i douse for earth energies so you want to hold them in your hands, but not so tight that, you know, you want to be relaxed. Hold them kind of shoulder width of part, width, width apart, and just start by swinging them so you can feel how they move in your hands. So the first thing that you're going to want to be able to do is to find a yes and a no. So you're going to hold your, your, your rods and you're going to say, show me a yes. So they're crossing. And then you're going to say, show me a no. So they're moving outwards. And so now you've got your yes and your no, and that's one of the first uh, techniques that you'll need when you're dousing earth energy. So it is something that you'll want to practice. So the next technique is your found response. You're going to want to be able to understand what the rods are telling you when they've found, when they've located what it is that you're asking for. So you can say, show me a found response. And so you'll probably find it's, it's the same as your yes response. So found for me was crossing. And so that's the same as yes. So now I have a way that I can ask my rods questions. So I've got my yes and my no, but I've also got a way in which the rods can tell me when they found what it is that I'm looking for. So the last technique that I'm going to show you in this video is something called directional dousing. And this allows us to track and locate something. It's really, really a cool technique and it's simple. And we just use the phrase, show me where the such and such is. So let me show that to you now. So I've got my rods and I'm going to say, show me where the lake is. There we go. And the rods are pointing towards the lake. I might say, show me where the house is. And so the rods are pointing towards the house, which is just over there. I might say, and well, let's see what's behind me. Oh, we've got a picnic bench there at the back. So I might say, show me where the picnic bench is. And it's, they're, they're pointing backwards to the bench. So um, a really good technique to use because you will be um, tracking some earth energy, um, earth energy lines like energy lays and some, some other things. So a good technique to practice as well. So just a little introduction into the use of rods and you will see how I use these as we're tracking some, um, some earth energy lines as well, which will be coming up, um, coming up soon in the video. So, I'm here at the amazing Hartley Castle. I'm in the grounds of Hartley Castle. You'll probably be able to see that in the background. And what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be dousing for an energy lay. So if you remember a little earlier, we talked about energy lays and these are the, the veins that run throughout the earth. I know that there's an energy lay here. I'm going to look, first of all, locate the nearest one. And then I'm going to pick up each of the two edges. So the first edge and then the outer edge. And that will help me to determine roughly how wide it is. I can also determine the direction of the lay as well as the, um, you know, the, the flow, um, you know, how, how high the energy of that particular lay is as well. So we're going to do that now. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, finding my my uh, my yes and my no, making sure that they're correct. So show me a yes, show me a no, and um, what's the um, found response? And as I said earlier, it usually is the yes response. And so now I've got my yes and my no and my found. I'm also going to just check in on whether I should be dousing for this, whether I can douse for this and, and seeking some permission as well. And this comes from uh, Sieg Longrun's uh, work on spiritual dousing. So um, can I douse this um, earth energy lay? Yes. 
Yes. Should I be dancing the same time she like? Yes. And may I be dancing the same time as you like? Yes. So that just means, am I able to douse? Am I in the right energetic space to be able to douse? Do I have the skills to douse this? It also is about whether this is something I should be doing and tapping into, and then just the permission to douse. So we have that now. So we're going to go. So what you're going to see as we as we move forwards is the rod is searching. So it's in this in this search mode. So it's going backwards and forwards from side to side. So it's searching. I've asked the question um, to find me the edge of the um, nearest energy lay. I know it's this way. We've got the direction. And so we're just slowly working through. The more that you douse, the more that you pick up energetics in your body as well. And you'll start to feel the energy shift as well as you're getting close to it. And that's definitely what I can feel happening here. All the, uh, all the hair on my head is standing up, which is uh, usually a good sign there's energy around. And so here we go. We're at the edge of the lay. So I'm going to put a dousing rod in so that we know where that, that is. So now I want to find the other edge of the energy lay. So we're going to do that now. So show me the edge of this energy lay. We've got lovely Canadian geese helping us. So there we go. We've found the edge of the um, energy lay there. So I'm just going to pace that out now and just see how wide this energy lay is. And you can see our wonderful shadows as well in the, in the film, which looks really good. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's about seven, seven feet uh, width, which is a reasonable sized uh, energy lay. So now I'm going to find where the midpoint is of that. So again, I'm going to ask my rod to find me in the middle of this energy lay. And there we go. We're about the, the midpoint in here. So I can ask the rod, show me the direction that this energy lay is flowing. And as you can see, I'm going to follow this around. So the energy is actually flowing this way, the direction moving, moving up. So um, it's an energy lay of about um, seven feet wide and the directions come in right through the, uh, the property there. So that's how to douse um, an energy. Now earth energy as it is, is far more complex than just energy lays that inter interlace themselves throughout the planet. Earth energy extends out into the cosmos. It literally is a web of energy currents that run through and above the earth. Global geomagnetic grids, of which there are several, are thought to arise from the Earth's magnetic field as a form of vertical or sometimes horizontal radiation. They follow laws of symmetry and direction. Then there are water lines, blind springs, spirals, power centers and more. They've got distinct features which can be doused for. Now I do want to talk about power points as these can be found all over the place and are extremely powerful and beneficial. And we can locate those using some dousing rods and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So now we're going to find a power point. So um, I talked uh, before about just how beneficial that these are to find. You'll have at least one of those in your homes and they'll be dotted about in the landscape as well. So I know that there's at least one power, power center here and we're gonna locate it. And then we're gonna just check how many radials they are. So let's get going. We need to, of course, um, check that I'm okay to find this. So um, may I find this PowerPoint? Can I find this PowerPoint? Should I find this PowerPoint? Yes. So we are good to go. So that's what we're going to do now. So show me the direction of the nearest PowerPoint. So here we go. So we're going to be just again, the rod's going to be tracking. It's going to be taking us to the direction of the PowerPoint. 
So all, all your job is at this point is to stay focused on what you're tracking and follow where the rod shows you. Again, I can feel it. Here we go. So we're starting. We've got a yes, a found response. We've also got the energy being picked up here as well. So we're going to count the radials. And to do that, I'm going to walk in a circle. So we're going to start here. So um, I'm asking the rods to count the radials. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got nine radials. And so this is a, a place of power and it's really beneficial to just even stand and hang out on it. So we're going to be coming back to that PowerPoint in a moment and I'll show you a little experiment which I hope you find as interesting as I do. So for me, one of the most intriguing things about understanding Earth energy is how our consciousness affects it. Now this can be positive or negative and might be the key to locations that feel kind of creepy, negative, maybe residual haunts and trap spirits. A number of years back, my interest was piqued by a video demonstration that I saw Hamish Miller perform. Using dowsing, he located the strongest energy center or power point in the space that he was in. So he explained that these energy centers are all over the earth and they have radials that emanate out of them. As I previously mentioned, these power centers are sources of high energy. But what I didn't say was that they can be affected by our own consciousness. So Hamish firstly identified the strongest power center in the room. Then he identified how many radials they had. I think there were about nine or so. A little while later after his presentation, he asked the audience to connect with the PowerPoint that he'd identified. He told people that they could simply just say hi or maybe have a conversation with their head, with words or energetics from their heart. And after a short time, literally you know, 20 seconds or more, he checked how many radials there were and they'd almost doubled. That simple act of focusing on the PowerPoint had positively affected it. It had grown and it was like the minds of those presents in the room had activated the PowerPoint by simply, no simply noticing it. And here's a demonstration of me affecting the PowerPoint that I found earlier. I hope you find interesting. But now I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. So I said earlier about how our unconscious mind affects the energy in the landscape. So I'm just going to spend um, uh, 20 seconds or so just really kind of tuning in. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to work from my heart space and I'm going to just be channeling some energy into this beautiful space. I'm going to say hi to it. going to send it some love. I'm going to tell it that I see it, that I know it's here. So now we're going to check just how many radials that short time has uh, taken on focusing it. So if you remember, we had nine radials before. So starting at this point, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, So just in that short, it wasn't even 20 seconds, it may have been 10 seconds of just channeling some love, telling the spot that I've seen it, the radials have um, increased from 9 to 12. So that's significant. And I think it's significant for us to know that our unconscious mind can affect the landscape and what are we putting out and how are we contributing to any of the energy that's just not beneficial to have in the world.
Now I think the implications are huge. How are we influencing the earth? If our collective mind is focused on negative thinking, this will have a direct impact on the earth energy itself. So are we weakening the earth by our constant focus on how weak she is? Maybe we can create a new narrative of a strong, vibrant, healthy and happy Gaia. Along with anything we can do directly to make an impact like recycling, reducing our carbon footprint, etc. We can spend a couple of minutes every day focusing on happy, healthy, whole. And we can also influence the energy in our homes. Negative thoughts and emotions will get imprinted onto the, the energy of the space that we live and work in. So remember, happy, healthy, whole can be applied to our homes, our place of work, and of course, our own state of being. So why is all of this important to understand? Well, because our bodies react to this energy, it's something that we need to be more aware of, as not all earth energy is good for us. Now, Hamish Miller suggests that we react to a frequency that's not comfortable for us. And the impact of this kind of uncomfortableness um, is that our, our body gets depleted, our energy is depleted as we try to kind of compensate. This was a brief introduction and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it stirred up more questions than I answered and maybe fired you up to learn more. My journey with earth energy and dowsing continues and I learn something new every day. I believe that we can have an amazing opportunity to understand the energetic nature of the earth um, through dowsing. And as a result, we can use this knowledge to help ourselves, our families, our friends and the community as a whole heal. Dowsing earth energy gets us out, it gets us interacting with the landscape, interacting with the trees, the rocks, the animals, plants, and bodies of water. We get to have a profound connection to the earth and develop a relationship with it. So ta-ta for now.